Hey, what's up? Me have some comic reviews to do. I got four books I picked up from the store this week that was in my pool list. Uh, all strictly Marvel. So, unfortunately, no DC this time around, but hey, that's all right. I was pretty excited by this, and I hope that you would be too. Uh, since I had a little spare cash on me, I uh, decided to also pick up uh, Batman Noel, which came out last week. Uh, which, from what I understand, this is by the artist, uh, the story and the art in this are by the artist from uh, Brian Azzarello's Joker. Uh, so I just couldn't pass up on this. Uh, haven't read it yet, but hopefully we'll and review it sometime tomorrow or later on in the week. Uh, but for my comic reviews, uh, let's just go ahead and get down to business. Start out with Wolverine number 18 by Jason Aaron. Uh, we're continuing the Chinatown story arc, which is going on in here. The uh, little Black Dragon organization that Wolverine left leaderless, and they basically fell into some bad stuff. And now Wolverine has to take on uh, this chick who's known as the Jade Claw, which he doesn't meet this issue. But uh, we get to find out exactly what her plan is and the fact that she wants to be the, the drug queen pin of the world. Uh, and they kind of lay out in this issue about how evil that she is and all that. Um, Wolverine and Gorilla Man have teamed up to take on this group, and guess what? They're fighting some big fucking dragons in this issue. That's right. Uh, they fight off a bunch of bad guys, and after hacking and slashing their way for a little bit, uh, they wind up in a sort of drawn and quarter type of problem in between two dragons. Um, this is a really good story. Uh, Jason Aaron, you know, again, not doing anything new with Wolverine. But, uh, that doesn't mean you can't have some fun in the story. Uh, you know, I kind of complained about this, and I'm going to have to just make peace with the fact that shock value is something that's not going to leave. And, of course, me listening to heavy metal for such, for a long time, too, which is very much about shock value, uh... It's going to have to just be here to stay with the comics. But uh, Wolverine and company, or at least the ones that you're with, uh, really got some hand, got their hands full with uh, these villains that they're fighting. Uh, and especially loved the sumo wrestler that was brought into this issue. He's funny. Um, all in all, though, uh, with this rating system, uh, Wolverine is still fun. Uh, I give it four out of five cold ones. Uh, can't wait to see what happens next issue. Next up, we have X-Men Legacy number 258 by Mike Carey. Uh, as you can see here, poor little Rachel Summers is in the, the grip of Friendless, the little inter interstellar cockroach who was uh, kind of messed up the, sta the space station that they're on and is flying it into the sun and they have to do something to hurry up and get their asses out of there before they're crispy critters. Um, this is a really good issue. It's mostly a large brawl fest and a little bit heavy on the dialogue side, but this is still still some good fun. Um, the story itself, I will say this with Mike Carey's writing, uh, these are typical X-Men stories. There's really not much at stake, at least in my mind, with the main characters that you're focusing on. Uh, I will say that the conclusion of this issue does bring home Rachel Summers, Havoc, and Polaris. So at the tail end of the issue, it's just going to be a setup for them getting uh, caught up in what's been happening for the last couple of years since they've been away from Earth. Uh, but still, Mike Carey provides a great bit of entertainment in this issue. I do recommend picking this up and jumping on board with it. Uh, next up. My favorite X book, and pretty much one of my favorite comics that I've been reading right now, Rick Remender's Uncanny X Force number 17. Chapter 7 of the Dark Angel Saga and the next to last in this story arc. Uh, this is good. Again, this is mostly a giant slugfest uh, issue taking place. Uh, Archangel is getting ready to plant the life seed that would, excuse me, uh, would kind of bring an apocalypse, so to speak, to the Earth, and he wants to remake it in his image. Uh, our characters have their hands full, Wolverine especially, while he's fighting a 
hundred foot tall version of the AOA uh, Iceman and if you could see him right here uh, <laughs> those claws ain't gonna do much as ice picks against this guy um, and Psylocke is brought under Archangel's control now uh, there's a mild disappointment too with that which I'll get to momentarily but the issue itself is mostly good uh, a large slugfest and we do get some cavalry brought in to help take care of Archangel while they still can uh, Nightcrawler especially is a badass in this issue and I really look forward to seeing him uh, in the new X4 stories after this one is over with um, Opina's art as always is still good uh, gritty type of cinematic art just beautiful to look at there is however a problem which I come to with uh, Psylocke a minor spoiler this is the shortest brainwashing that I've seen of a character she was under his control and they do manage to break her out of it uh, by the end of this issue uh, they kind of built up to it for like the last issue or two and when they finally break it very very anticlimactic uh, this is really the the biggest thing that I've had to get on to remember to so far because they kind of built this built up her being put under Archangel's control and then it's over and done with just like that but uh, the final part of this issue does leave for what hopefully will be an interesting conclusion uh, and I think that this is easily the best one of the best story arcs that I've read so far this year um, buy it uh, if you haven't been reading it I don't know why I think you're missing out on something good and finally let's round this out with a uh, trip to the ultimate universe and jump into ultimate spider-man number four by Brian Michael Bendis with art by Sir Pacelli this issue is better than the last ones um, this issue mostly uh, gives Miles a crash course in why Peter Parker did what he did when he was spider-man and kind of lets us know at the time exactly when it takes place uh, I did not read ultimate fallout so I, I do know that Miles kind of debuted in there but they didn't really cover much of them uh, this issue pretty much establishes that he was there when uh, Peter was killed by Norman Osborn at the end of the death of Spider-Man and uh, he kind of meets Gwen Stacy at the church and she kind of gives him a little they, they have a small uh, conversation she basically explains to him why Pete did the what, what he did but he doesn't really tell her his dilemma um, I kind of started feeling like they uh, Bendis had rushed this out a little bit but I went back and I read it a second time and it kind of makes sense because he's trying to hurry up and bring, bring things up to speed and I don't think that it's been you know as busy as what Action Comics was that I complained about last week uh, Bendis is doing a good job pacing this out and the ending leaves us uh, meeting up with uh, an interesting character from uh, the spider family in here um, all in all it's a good issue been a small but good week in comics and I do hope that you think about picking up some of these books if you missed them uh, until next time I will catch you guys next week so have a good one